Rahim Habarim, welcome to Messianic Moment Ministries on this Friday, the 16th of April, 2021. I'm Stephen Brook, and thank you for being here. You know, usually I, I have like a casual t-shirt or a tank top on because I usually go work out after this, but today I'm back in the 1950s, right? With a nice white t-shirt, undershirt. All I need is like a hard box of Marlboros or something wrapped up in my shoulder here. Anybody who's not a baby boomer has no idea what I'm talking about, but those of you who are in my age group, you know what I mean. Anyway, <clears throat> this Shabbat, the reading is a double parsha, And these four chapters deal with the uncleanliness of birth secretions and of the skin diseases that we, we call leprosy. In the Hebrew, it's called tzara. I have absolutely no idea why God makes a woman unclean after giving birth to a girl twice as long as when giving birth to a boy. And despite the many jokes I already have popping into my head, I will demonstrate restraint and wisdom and not post even one of them today. <clears throat> the age old argument for why God gave us these instructions is that they are for hygienic reasons or they are strictly Levitical, which means religious. They can be, of course, valid arguments for both sides. Obviously, <clears throat> if someone has leprosy, you do not want them in the general population for the safety of all. On the other hand, Leprosy was also used as a punishment for religious disobedience, as in Numbers 12, when God struck Miriam with leprosy for speaking against Moses. As such, it may represent being spiritually cut off from the people, as well as physically. I consider these regulations as the type of instructions we call chukim, which are commandments and laws for which we cannot understand why God gave them to us. Yes, it's easy to understand separating a person with a contagious disease, but why is a woman unclean after giving birth to a girl twice as long as for a boy? I mean, we can understand she's unclean from the secretions caused by the birth, but, well, then again, why is someone ceremonially unclean just because they had a secretion? I've stated often when we come across a commandment from God, one for which we have no idea why he gave it to us, that obedience doesn't require understanding, only faith and trust. I've stated this more often than not, I think, when we are going through the book of Leviticus, because, well, there's this is where there's a lot of chukim. But that is not what I feel something we should review now. No, I think the message for today is simply that when we come across a commandment that deals with hygiene, it can also represent both a physical and spiritual condition. For example, witches are almost always portrayed as ugly because their spiritual essence is so evil that it affects their physical appearance as well. Conversely, spiritually pure people are displayed as beautiful. So what about Samantha Stevens? In the TV show Bewitched, she was a witch and she was absolutely gorgeous. Oh, wait, wait a minute. She was a good witch, wasn't she? <laughs> if there can be such a thing. Of course, for decades, TV and movies have been portraying evil as good in order to get us conditioned to thinking that evil is not just acceptable, but desirable. After all, Satan is called the prince of the air, and how is TV transmitted? Yeah, but we're getting off topic. So let's get back to today's partial. The lesson I believe these partial can give us today is that one's physical condition doesn't necessarily indicate their spiritual condition. Many people with horrendous physical ailments or handicaps can be pure as new fallen snow spiritually. And there are beautiful people who are more like what Yeshua accused the Pharisees of being, whitewashed sepulchers full of dead people's bones. So here it is, pure and simple. Do not judge from the outside, but try to see people as God does from the inside. It is hard to overcome the social conditioning we all, and I mean everyone in the world, the social conditioning we all have undergone, which is that beauty is better than ugliness. But when we look at people's fruit, 
instead of their bodies, we will be able to judge properly what their spiritual condition is, despite their physical appearance. And one last thing, please try to avoid discussions about why God said we must or must not do something. They may be interesting from a scholarly view, but when it comes down to what is important, knowing why God wants you to do something, I mean, understanding something is not going to save you. But doing what God wants you to do, well, it, it's certainly not going to hurt you. Well, thank you for supporting this ministry by reading these messages and listening to these videos. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Click the icon here, subscribe to YouTube. Go back to the website, click the subscribe button in the right-hand margin. There are different lists and help this ministry to grow. You know, also, share the messages with everyone you know to help it grow. And you might even consider, when you're on my website, looking at my books. And maybe you might even want to buy some. I mean, they're available in paperback and they're also available in Nook. I mean, for a Nook version, they're only like three, four bucks. Anyway. <clears throat> That's it for this week. So, I'm going to say Lihitrot and Shabbat Shalom.